Welcome to Terra State Community College and our registration information session for summer and fall 2012. First, be aware that for both of the terms, both summer and fall, registration starts Monday, March 26th. This registration is considered a VIP registration because it will be for our continuing students and or those students that are returning that have been fr away from the institution less than five years. The second registration will start for all students, and that will be on Tuesday, April 3rd. This will include our new as well as older returning students. For summer 2012, please note we have four different sessions within the term. The 10-week session starts Monday, May 21st and goes through Monday, July 30th. The eight-week session is Monday, June 4th through Monday, July 30th. And then we have two shortened five-week sessions. The first starts Monday, May 21st through Monday, June 25th. And the second starts Tuesday, June 26th through Monday, July 30th. Dates for fall, again, we have four sessions within the term. We have a 16-week session, which begins Monday, August the 20th, and continues until Friday, December 14th. We have a 14-week session that begins on Tuesday, September 4th, and ends on Friday, December 14th. Again, we have two eight-week sessions, the first, starts on Monday, August the 20th, and goes until Tuesday, October the 16th. And this is followed by the second eight-week session starting Wednesday, October the 17th through Friday, December the 14th. Withdrawal dates for summer. We hope you're, you don't have to withdraw from classes, but if you do, please note that there are dates where you can only withdrawal up to that date. For the first five-week session, it's Friday, June 15th. For the 10-week, it's Thursday, July 12th. The eight-week is Monday, July 16th. And the second five-week is Friday, July 20th. Likewise, the withdrawal dates for fall. Uh, the first eight-week is Monday, October 1st. The 16-week is Wednesday, November 14th. The 14 week is Monday, November 19th, and the second eight week is Wednesday, November 28th. This will be followed now by other um, Terra employees who will be talking about financial aid, curriculum, the Academic Service Center, and the cashiers area. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the Summer 2012 and Fall 2012 Academic Service Center update. Just going over our services again, I know most of you know what they are, but in case you're new, our services are academic advising, peer and online tutoring, the math and writing lab, and we also have an accounting lab, um, the, the testing center, the transfer center, supplemental instruction currently for chemistry, accounting, and psychology, and educational psychology. And uh, new for this summer and fall, probation and academic improvement, and we'll touch on that in just a little bit. Of course, just want you all to remember our key information and how to reach us. Um, this is the email that goes to um, any of our student workers at the front desk and is the best way to send an email to our office. Our phone number, and of course, you can always step down and visit us. That's a wonderful way to get whatever service you need. Um, we also have online tutoring, which is www.etutoring.org, and um, please utilize that service. We have um, math, statistics, biology, accounting, um, and writing help within that. So just to kind of go over our services, of course, academic advising, you can get advice on your major, if you're having some issues inside or outside of class, or you see that um, a student in your class is having some issues, please suggest that they come visit us in the academic advising area of the Academic Service Center. 
The peer tutoring is one-on-one -on -one tutoring in any subject area. So whether you need some help in a class or you're a faculty member and see that a student might need some help, or if you're doing really well in a class or had done well in the past and would like to tutor for us, um, just come see us, stop by, and we'll get you all set up. Um, but you can also do all of that through your student portal uh, at www.tara.edu. Um, every service in the Academic Service Center um, can take walk-ins, but we really do encourage you to make an appointment. That way we can provide you with the service in the amount of time uh, where we can give you a quality um, service. So please make an appointment if you are able. Supplemental instruction is another service that we offer, and we do that through our faculty partners. If you are a faculty member and you think that supplemental instruction would complement your course, please contact me, Erin House, um, at ehouse01 at terra.edu, or my extension is uh, 2108, and I'd love to talk to you. But currently, we have accounting, chemistry, and psychology. They'll have uh, in the faculty course load a dash SI after them. So as you're chatting with students, if you're advising them and they uh, would be interested in some peer-facilitated group study, um, please point them in the direction of dash SI. And then, like I said before, uh, new for this summer, the Academic Service Center uh, will be taking over um, academic improvement. We may toy with the name, um, but currently we'll kind of keep it the same. Uh, that's something that Disability Services used to handle. Um, and we're currently working on uh, kind of nailing down the process and procedure and seeing if there's any reason to uh, reevaluate it. And then once we do, we'll get that all out to um, students, faculty, and staff. We will be working with students who are coming back to Terra after a dismissal to make sure that they step off on the right foot when they come back. And we're also going to be working proactively with current students who are on probation to make sure they don't get dismissed and to hopefully attach them to resources that will help them be successful. So just in case you need a reminder, we have um, a handful of advisors in our office and their contact information and what they specialize in is listed right here. And that's it. Thank you very much. And please don't be a stranger to the Academic Service Center. We always like to say we make it our business to know everybody else's. So if you have some updates for us or ways that we can help better serve the students, we're always uh, happy to take feedback. Hello, uh, this is Joe Spencer, Director of Financial Aid here at Terra State Community College. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to review these updates. I'll be presenting some uh, major changes that are occurring in financial aid, and um, these are going to cover areas that you should be aware of for the summer 2012 term and the 2012-2013 academic year. This year, financial aid has done something new. Uh, we have sent out estimated summer award letters. These have been sent out to student email accounts. You'll want to go ahead and check that. Um, it's a, basically a very general overview of some of the types of aid that you'll be able to receive um, based on certain assumptions uh, that you'll be attending the whole summer term, that you'll be attending full time. And um, this will help you decide or help students decide uh, whether they want to sign up for summer classes. Once you do sign up for classes, financial aid will then uh, calculate your actual award. And if you d go less than full time or take a mini session, then there will be some um, difference between what you actually get and what you'll see in the estimated summer awards. For those students that uh, are coming in new to summer term, uh, we do like to let everyone know that the uh, summer term is part of the 2011-2012 award year. So when you go on to complete your FAFSA, make sure that you have the right tab selected for 11 and 12. Now that we're coming close to uh, fall 2012, the default for the Department of Ed will be the 1213 tab. So make sure you submit the correct uh, FAFSA for the summer term. Another question we always get, and we just want to be clear about this, that for summer, full time is considered 12 credit hours. It's the same as fall and spring. For the 12-13 academic year, uh, the 12-13 FAFSA is now available. 
It's at fafsa.ed.gov. We always recommend that students collect their tax income information from their tax forms. They have any documentation they, they uh, can get for untaxed information and then for students that maybe uh, live with relatives or, or receive um, help purchasing food that we also um, have an idea of in-kind income that we receive. New to the 2012-2013 FAFSA, um, well, not necessarily new, they had this in 11-12, but what we're suggesting for the 12-13 year is the IRS data retrieval. New to the verification process is that students that use this tool will no longer be required to turn in their, their tax forms. Uh, the IRS data retrieval is a way that students can, on the FAFSA, go ahead, select that they would uh, pull the information straight from the IRS database. For students that have submitted 2012, 2011 taxes electronically, there's a two-week time period between when you submit and when you can use the IRS data retrieval tool. For those um, people doing the paper forms and submitting that uh, via the mail, there's an eight-week turnaround. And we have also received information that uh, if, any, if any student owes money in taxes, there's also a delay that way. If you cannot use the IRS data retrieval tool when you're completing the FAFSA because you haven't met those timelines, we always recommend going on filling out the FAFSA as soon as possible and then going back at a later date to uh, make changes to a process FAFSA and then using the IRS data retrieval at that time. This will save a lot of time upfront if you're selected for verification because you will have less forms to turn in. We also would like people to know that scholarship applications are available through the student portal under My Forms. We have a priority deadline of April 1st. Um, this will make sure that you get priority consideration for um, our different scholarship funds. So we highly recommend that you go onto your student portal or, um, or advise students to go to the student portal uh, before this deadline to submit that paper or to submit that electronic form. Students that submit after that date, we will be accepting, and um, they will be considered if there are still funds remaining available. There are many new changes to the 12-13 um, financial aid rules. Um, one such area is eligibility. Starting July 1, 2012, you need to have completed a high school diploma, GED, or have completed homeschooling to be eligible for financial aid. Currently, you can take an ability to benefits test or you can have transferred in credit hours from another institution. But because of changes in the federal regulations, starting July 1st, for any new students enrolling at that time, you will have needed to complete one of those to be eligible for financial aid. Another eligibility um, change has to deal with the Pell Grant. Um, President Obama had recently signed in to law um, basically a new limitation for the Pell Grant. This limits people to six years of full-time Pell Grant. And this means that uh, starting with the 12-13 award year, students that may have been eligible in prior years, if they're past that limit, will no longer um, be eligible for Pell Grant at that time. Department of Ed will be sending out emails to students between uh, the months of April and July. And once uh, July hits, we will be getting uh, more formal information from them regarding student statuses, and we will be contacting students. So make sure that um, if you receive an email concerning Pell Grant, that you're aware that it has come from the Department of Education, and you should contact financial aid if you have any questions. Another major area of changes for the 12-13 uh, uh, award year is in the area of verification. Um, previously, if a student was selected for verification, we would, we would ask for a signed copy of the um, student or um, parent tax forms, the federal form 1040, 1040A, or 1040EZ. New changes in the regulations state that we will only be re we will only be accepting tax transcripts submitted from the IRS. Um, please note that there are two different types of transcripts you can get from the IRS: a tax transcript or a uh, account transcript. Financial aid will need a tax transcript if you are selected for verification. 
Uh, and this does not require a signature um, since it is a formal document straight from the IRS. In addition, uh, the Department of Education has changed regulations on um, receiving verification for um, people that receive food stamp help and for people that make payments of child support. Um, previously, we required no type of documentation if you were a food stamp recipient. If you select that you um, ha receive food stamps on the FAFSA, uh, we are going to uh, be forced to require that students go to Ohio Job and Family Services to obtain some documentation um, that they receive this benefit. Prior to this 12-13 uh, academic year, we only required uh, people who received payment of child support to um, submit documentation for uh, how much they've received. The Department of Education is now requiring that we collect similar information for people that make payments for child support. This information is also available at Ohio Job and Family Services. The cashier's office has several important dates throughout the term. Payment due dates for summer 2012. Payment is due the first Friday of the term. The 10 and first five week sessions are due on May 25th. Eight week session payment is due on June 8th and the second five week session is due on June 29th. Payment plans are available for spring uh, term and they're split into three payments uh, for the 10 and eight week sessions. Those payments are due May 25th, June 25th, and July 25th. Payment plans are not available for the five week session. Students will pay a $20 fee to sign up for a payment plan and it's important for students to make each payment by the scheduled due date to avoid a $25 late fee. Students with available financial aid will have book accounts in the college store on the following dates. Uh, May 14th through June 15th for the 10, 8, and first five week sessions. June 25th through July 2nd for the second five week sessions. Students with excess financial aid will receive disbursement checks on the following dates. Wednesday, June 27th for the eight, the 10, eight, and first five week sessions. And then we will have a second disbursement for the second five week session on July 12th. Now moving on to fall 2012. Once again, payment is due the first Friday of the term. The 16 and first eight week sessions are due on August 24th. The 14 week session is um, extended to the next Monday because classes start on Tuesday, the day after Labor Day. The second eight week session is due October 19th. And payment plans for fall uh, semester are divided uh, into four payments. Book accounts for fall uh, vouchers will be available August 13th through September 11th for the 16, 14, and first eight week sessions, and October 11th through the 23rd for the second eight week session. Financial aid disbursements uh, will be available Wednesday, sep September 26th for the 16, 14, and first eight week sessions and Thursday, November 1st for the second eight-week session. Just a few notes. Um, the cashier's office is located in A200, and um, their office hours are um, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 8 to 4 on Fridays. Students can view their accounts and make payments by going to terra.edu and clicking on My Ledger. Uh, the college uses a paperless billing system, uh, so but students can always view their accounts, and MasterCard, Visa, and Discover cards are accepted. Now we're going to talk about changes within the curriculum for summer and fall 2012. 
Introduction to Physical Therapy, Fall 2012. The field of physical therapy continues to provide great opportunities for those seeking a rewarding career in health care and physical rehabilitation. The projected employment growth for physical therapist assistance in Ohio is 31% for the next six years. Sign up for Med 1200 for fall. Although Med 1200 is a prerequisite for admission to Tara's Physical Therapist Assistant Program, it is also recommended as an affordable two credit hour way for students who may be unsure of their academic or career choice to explore the field of physical therapy further. Creative Writing, Fall 2012. By popular demand, the English department will be offering creative writing ENG 1350 in the fall for the first time. The class will run on Monday, Wednesdays from 3.30 to 4.50 p.m. Don't miss adding this popular class to your fall 2012 schedule. CIT 1090 name change. Please note that Computer Fundamentals had changed its name to Digital Literacy and Applications, but it is still three credit hours. No change in content. Don't be confused with this change. Sign up soon. And there's two classes that are being offered uh, new within the mathematics area for summer 2012. The first is Calculus and Analytic Geometry 3, Math 2530. It's part of our traditional calculus sequence. Topics covered include a study of vectors, vector calculus, analytic geometry in space, differential calculus of several variables, partial derivatives, and multiple integrals and applications. Calculus 3 is useful for those wishing to further their studies in the fields of engineering, mathematics, physics, or career in meteorology. This class will run for eight weeks starting on June 4th. Sign up starting March 26th. Statistics or Math 2010 will be offered either online or in the classroom. This four credit hour course will begin on May 21st and runs for 10 weeks. Topics covered include an introduction to descriptive and inferential statistics. Um, also, calculation of measures of central tendency and dispersion, calculation of event probability, calculations using counting techniques including combinations and permutations, study of binomial, Poisson, and normal probability distributions, study of frequency and relative frequency distributions, population parameter estimation, confidence interval estimation, hypotheses testing, analysis of variation, chi-square analysis, and quality control. The transfer credit for this course is good for most majors and would be of particular interest to those pursuing studies in healthcare, mathematics, business, and education. Remember to check with your transfer institution today. Corrections and Criminology classes new for Fall 2012. Both LEN 2200 Corrections and LEN 2400 Criminology will be offered for the first time this fall. They are second year approved TAG courses in the Criminal Justice and Police Science majors. Online day and evening traditional classes are available. Sign up begins March 26. The following credit classes are being offered from Health and Physical Education, revamped 212. This is a one credit hour. It is a 16 week circuit style class that utilizes hand weights, bands, steps, 
stability balls, medicine balls, and more. Enjoy a fun, fast-paced workout focusing on weight loss while improving overall health. Students will explore the role of different nutrients and exercise for health and well-being. Students will participate in weekly weigh-ins and learn about basic nutritional information such as essential nutrients, nutritional claims, sorting fact from fiction, and food labels. This class is going to be offered Monday and Wednesdays from 5 to 5 p.m. Zumba is a one credit hour. This course teaches students the basics of Zumba. Zumba is an exhilarating, effective, easy to follow, Latin inspired, calorie burning dance exercise. Zumba combines fast and slow rhythms that tone and sculpt the body because it utilizes a balanced blend of cardio and muscle toning techniques. Students will learn the three basic concepts of Zumba, the muscles used during this type of dancing, and the basic steps of Zumba. This class is held on Wednesdays from 6 to 7.40 p.m. Running and walking, which is also a one credit hour course. This course will develop the proper techniques for walking and running. Students will enhance their walking and running performance. Students will understand the proper gait for both walking and running, as well as how the mind and body can benefit from a walk-run program. And this course is held on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Boot Camp. Learn how a boot camp class is set up to utilize the body's energy systems and gain knowledge of how to develop a multi-leveled boot camp class. Boot camp is a class that combines power, function, agility, speed, cardio, and interval training. Students will discover how the body systems work at different intensities and how different muscles are utilized in the different planes of movement. Students will be in a learning atmosphere while having fun. This class is held on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9.30 to 10.20 a.m. and is also a one credit hour course. Yoga. This can help you feel healthier, to feel less beaten down by stress, to feel more alert and focused, to sleep better, to gain muscle tone and flexibility, and to feel more alive and energetic. Emphasis is on the different backgrounds of yoga. From beginner to immediate, any person can benefit from learning the significance of the poses to how yoga flows. Find out how to balance the mind, body, and spirit. Gain knowledge of yoga sequences, progressions, movements, breathing, and much more in this class. This class is held on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 to 11.50 a.m. Cycle is a one-credit-hour class as well. In this course, the student will understand and demonstrate the proper fit for an indoor cycling bike. The basics of a cycling class will be taught and implemented. Students will be able to recognize the different fitness intensities by learning about their target heart rate, engaging their target heart rate with the use of a heart rate monitor. They will know how to train the correct heart rate for their age and body type. This course is held on Monday and Wednesdays from 11 to 11.50 a.m. Don't forget, sign up early to get these and other courses. Sign up begins March 26th.